Sup nerd amigos, welcome to Pint Night, I'm John Norgrove. This is a once weekly look into kind of whatever the heck I want to talk about as we drink a pint. So grab your favorite beverage and uh, let's get started. Today's pint is from Barrel Brothers, uh, Batch Don't Kill My Vibe, which is a uh, West Coast style IPA coming in at seven and a half percent. Oh, I didn't just shake that up looking at the can. I did a little. Ooh, that's good. It's um, it's like only a little fruity. I know like a lot of like hazies and like milkshakes and like juicy IPAs and all that kind of stuff nowadays are getting very like tropical fruity. And th this is like a little bit more of that like sort of plant material, um, oniony, like dank hops as I would call them. But yeah, this is crazy good, holy heck. Okay, so news. Let's talk about news today. So first up in the news, the Oscars are in the news and I have several things to say about the Oscars or more to the point because I don't actually know what the Oscars are or which ones they are or why anybody gives a shit about them. But like, do people still care about these fucking Hollywood like award stuff? Like I understand that if you're in Hollywood, it matters because like you're the one that's being recognized potentially or whatever. But like at this point in time, I feel like who cares about all these dumb award shows? And they try so hard to like seem cool, but like they still like make barriers based on like gender and race and like superhero movies not being permitted for stuff. I guess they, uh, uh, what was I? I was watching uh, Philip DeFranco show and uh, he had mentioned that they added a fan favorite film category. Um, and I was just like, so this is a pretend category. This is a like, you guys are bitching category. And so we're gonna give it to somebody that you guys want us to give it to, but we still don't recognize them as like whatever Oscar worthy means, which is super horseshit. I, like I think about like, what's the other ones? Like the Golden Globes and, and, and all, all these other stupid like film award show things. I've never watched them. I've never gotten into them. I've never cared about them. Like if I like a film, I like a film. And if I don't like a film, I don't like a film. And frankly, if I like a film and you don't like it, that's fine, right? Um, and if you don't like it, right? I mean, like there's a bunch of people, a bunch of Trekkies nowadays who are like not into new Trek or whatever, right? And I'm just like, new Trek's awesome, right? I'm Super, super looking forward to more Picard. I'm super into Discovery. Like, like, um, uh, the new Pike series looks awesome. Uh, Lower Decks is maybe the most genius thing <laughs> that Star Trek has produced, like, in a very long time. Uh, Prodigy is fun, regardless of the fact, and I like Prodigy, and I have huge issues with the characters. Like, the main character, like, a lot, like, several of the characters in Prodigy, I think, are, like, almost like over the top they're like hammed up children right it's like it's like child to the max um and like the way that they make decisions is kind of absurd but it's still like a good show and i enjoy it and like but if you if you're not into new trek and you're like or like you're not into cartoons so you don't want to watch like lower decks fine like that's cool whatever right like i i think the idea that everything like that like this is this is like mass loved thing like that's unnecessary right like as long as it's good and for me personally and a, a thing that i complain about all the time <laughs> julie heard me complain about it like 47 times yesterday <laughs> while we were re-watching um the uh the king arthur movie who produced that king arthur movie Guy Ritchie, that Guy Ritchie King Arthur movie. And like, I know that got like a lot of heat and a lot of people didn't like it. I fucking love that movie. Uh, it's like Jude Law is in that and like a, just a bunch of people are in that. It's so good. Little Fingers in that. Like, it's Ragnar. so, who? Ragnar. Oh yeah, Ragnar's in that. Like so many people are in that. It's so good and it's so fun. And it's just like this fun adventure. Oh, is it historically accurate to Arthurian legend? No. Is it like are the clothes period enough no right but at the same time i mean it, it's it's like a fantasy heist action adventure movie and does it have to be held to this like 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 a tour art film standards or can like we just make a fun ass movie 
right? I mean, I would argue that like the greatest proof of this is all of the Fast and the Furious movies and all of them are absurd and I love every single one of them for different reasons. Uh, Tokyo Drift is the best one, fight me about it. But like, it's like, like who cares, right? Um, so yeah, I just like, I heard this Oscar news stuff and like anytime I hear about these, these, these uh, Hollywood award show things, I'm just like, ah, I don't care. Uh, so, so I was just like, I'm gonna bring it up during pint night and like, y you know, not be as all over the place, I guess, ish as I have been in these. Cause like I wrote down notes that are hung underneath the camera, like a respectable YouTuber, uh, who's like an adult who plants as opposed to last week where I just like opened a pint and was like, uh, this is what I have to talk about. <laughs> All right, so the second thing that I wanted to talk about, again, eh, news-ish, uh, I we finally started watching Star Wars Visions, which is the, like, anime Star Wars thing, and we've only watched the first three episodes, um, so, like, vague spoilers, I guess? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how long it's been out. Like, whatever. I don't know. Um, it's really good. It was super fun. First of all, I'm a huge anime fan. I think super obviously, right? Like if you're if you're watching this and you don't know that I'm an anime fan, go back watch a bunch of the other stuff that we've done. Um, but like I'm a huge anime fan and I super love uh what they're doing in this like Star Wars anime like stylized like every episode is like hyper stylized and like it's really it's just like a legitimately amazing and fun experience to watch these episodes and I had a super great time. So I'm just going to briefly go over the three episodes that we watched. Just like a, I wrote like a little like one liner about each one. So episode one was this like uh, was this like badass Ronin story in this like stylized black and white. But like there was like hints of color in like glow, like old school Japanese style, like samurai Star Wars, like uh, Edo period ish, even though there was like robots and shit sort of a thing. It was super cool. I have always loved the the like taking the Star Wars universe like style and making it like more samurai, more Edo, more Japanese. I think that it it, it like those embellishments look really good in the Star Wars universe. And like it was really, really good. The first episode immediately I was just like, God, you got you got me. Damn like super into it. The second episode was very adorable, like rock band episode, but everybody was like chibi kawaii. And like, it reminded me a lot of the anime Beck, if you've seen that, that is a fun anime. Um, far and away, chibi Boba Fett was the most adorable, but also Jabba's assistant, the the like white tentacle head dude who's always with Jabba. He <laughs> He was like the goofiest looking character. And I couldn't every time, even when he was like a tiny little thing in the distance on scene, I was just like, I can't handle it. Cause they just, the way that they painted his face in was just, it was just so goofy. It was so ridiculous. It was so, like, it was such a good episode and it had great music. And like, like it presented again, that like tiny amount of bonus texture in the Star Wars universe. And I would argue that like, this is what Star Wars needs right now. Like Star Wars doesn't need more like big budget hype films. They just need to like, like add texture to the universe, especially since like you pissed a lot of fans off by like decanonizing, uncanonizing, firing the canon, whatever the acronym is there. Uh, analogy, Jesus, <laughs> whatever the analogy is there for removing the books from canon. Now the Star Wars books are awesome. So like I've read a bunch of the older ones like back in the day. So like that's ridiculous, but yeah, that was super good. And then the third episode was was like, again, super anime, super stylized. I totally thought it was Luke and Leia in the beginning and I was totally wrong, but that's okay. Um, but really as like cool and stylized and whatever that episode was, for me, the like the best part was that it just whole last confirmed that there's air in space. Uh, <laughs> because these dudes are like on the prow of Star Destroyer fighting with like just masks off. Like I, I understand that they have the force but I don't think the force can like create matter out of nothingness. So these guys are either breathing vacuum or there's air in space in Star Wars. And frankly, I appreciate that as well as the like final scene. Again, these are, I'm always talking spoilers. So like, just, you know, man, uh, but like the, the like, the like twin Star Destroyer death cannon thing was cool. And then like the, like the boy child or whatever being like, like getting on his X-Wing 
and being like, being like, we're gonna jump, like jumping, like slashing upside down on his X-Wing whilst jumping to hyperdrive so that way he can like slash through his sister's like octuple, like Doc Ock Sith lightsaber nonsense was super badass. I love that they reuse the whole like hyperdrive mass murder thing. Uh, Cause it's mass murder, right? There was a bunch of people on those ships, but uh, it, was, it was very cool. It was super fun. So super fun, super stylized, super cool. 100% recommend. I mean, we're gonna watch more. We're only three in. And I think there's like nine or 12 or something, but like 100% recommend watch these. Go watch these if you have Disney Plus and you have not seen them. Even if you are an anime fan, like each episode is its own style and different. So like, don't, like if you're not into that anime, that episode style, they're like 30 minutes, you can put up with it, right? And just experience the story as it's being presented in that in that stylization. And then just like go to the next one and, and like, you'll find something that you're into, right? I mean, it's just like looking for anime. Like if you're not into shonen, or like if you're not into like chibi stuff, or like if you're more into like, like, uh, like slice of life anime and not like action anime or something like that, like that's fine, right? Like you can't like all, you can't like everything all the time, right? I guess we're taught that we're not supposed to be able to. Um, but no, it was super cool. Highly, highly recommend. Um, <laughs> next up, back on like fitness and exercise and stuff like that. So still hitting those Oculus two fitness games. Um, still hitting, still hitting, um, the boxing one. That one's super fun. Still kicks my ass. Still, still kicks my, my, uh, my arms and my shoulders ass, uh, playing more record or <laughs> record of Ragnarok. Oh my God. It's just called Ragnarok. <laughs> That's the anime we need to review still, but still hitting Ragnarok, still hitting Pistol Whip, uh, looking at a couple of other ones that are like kind of interesting or whatever. Um, I still need to figure out how to import music because I guess you can like import songs into Ragnarok, but I don't know how to do that yet. And I just, I've been busy with like a million other projects, but so like, that's fun. But again, it's just like, war like every day I get like 30 to an hour's worth of minutes in, <laughs> 30 to 60 minutes in. Um, and it's good. It's, it's, you know, like you got to keep it going. And you know, my, my L cars fitness watch is always, is always like, ah, do stuff. Don't be lazy. So like, that's helpful. And then with regard to like eating and stuff, cause like these are always gonna have a little update on my like fitness journey to put it in quotes. Um, yeah, trying not to overeat, uh, regardless of the fact that I'm literally standing here right now, like I want to lay down and die. Cause I just had like, a super huge, delicious dinner. We would like went out to dinner just cause we don't, we rarely ever eat out. And we went out to dinner and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have a fried chicken sandwich. And I had a fried chicken sandwich and I forgot that like restaurants offer monster proportions. And I like ate the sandwich and like half the fries. I was like, I'm gonna die. And then, <laughs> and then the, 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 the guy at the restaurant was like, do you guys want ice cream? And I'm just like, yeah, of course I want fucking ice cream. Damn, it's so tasty. So I crushed some ice cream and now I'm having this beer and I'm gonna go lay down and pass out before I edit this video. So that way I can like process. Maybe I'll just go do squats outside or something. Um, but yeah, just trying to keep up with that sort of stuff. Um, I got like a scale that like does all the measurements and whatnot and like can sync up with all of my stuff. And just like, again, like tracking everything, trying to eat healthier, trying to make, re uh, you know, responsible decisions. Thumbs up, you know? Uh, so that's good. Like I'm down like between eight and 10 or 11 pounds right now over the course of like, four to six weeks. So that's like right where you want to be doing good. Kilts are fitting a little looser. You know, I mean, you don't see them in these videos, but like kilts are fitting a little looser. So that's good to go. Um, and then lastly, uh, like a little bonus section. I have been seeing some lists of ranking Star Trek series, like favorite, like most favorite to least favorite online. And so I was just like, I have to do this and start fights with people <laughs> because I know like every list I see, there's like a few that I'm just like, yeah, that makes sense. And then there's a few where I'm just like, ah, and so I'm like, yeah, you know what? No, we'll do it to the, we'll do it to my pine drinking homies, you know? So I'm going to start with, there are 10 seat, there are 10 series out and I'm not counting short Trek. And the reason why I'm not counting short Trek is because it's like, to me, short Trek is like those bonus behind the scenes. Sort of things I mean, I understand that Short Trek is like literally episodes of Star Trek, but that are like only like real short. But like, I I don't feel like Short Trek 
I, I feel like it's unfair to Short Trek is the best way that I'm going to put that because like, and I'm, I generally see Short Trek like fairly low on people's lists. So I don't want to like whatever. So I'm going to count down from my most favorite to my least favorite, uh, which I know like doesn't build the surprise or whatever, but like, I think it's just a better way to like go over this. So my first and most favorite series of Star Trek, Star Trek Voyager. Star Trek Voyager is the best. Janeway is the best. Fight me. There's coffee in that nebula. I don't care. I fucking love Kate Mulgrew. I love Tom Paris. I love uh, Chakotay, even though I hate that guy. And 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 Seven of Nine and Kess and Neelix. I, like, Voyager is my show. It is my ship. I love, love, love Voyager. Next up is Star Trek The Next Generation. Is what I grew up with. Um... Cards, my homie. Uh, I love Worf. I love all the characters in it. Um, yeah, it's. I feel like. I feel like for me, as much as Voyager is my favorite, ne TNG Next Gen was like what I grew up with, right? Um, so Next Gen's second, third, coming in with a new one is Lower Decks. Lower Decks is so genius. It's so good. It's like. It's like Lower Decks is like pure side quest, right? When you're playing a game, like when you're playing like an open world RPG and you're like, this is fun, but what if I don't do the main story and I just do all these fucking side quests that are super fun and just like hunt the 1200 chickens on Mount Doom or whatever the fuck, you know? Like it's very, it's very like GTA where you're just like, I could play the story or I could just steal cars and run around town. So what if I just did that? You know, like it's, I love, love, love Lower Decks. It's like hit me. It's exactly what I want from like an animated Star Trek series that's like modern, you know, and like like millennial e and all that kind of stuff. After Lower Decks, another cartoon, the animated series of the original series. TAS, the animated series is so good. Uh, and it's one of those ones where I actually own all of them on VHS tape, all the episodes on VHS tape. Um, and like when I was a kid, uh, we, I used to rewatch them all the time because it's like, it's like original series, but just like, they're able to take it up like, like a one extra notch because it's like a cartoon or whatever, as well as like, I mean, the audio design is the, uh, like the audio control and design is all over the place. And, um, James doing like fills in for like every role and like there's interesting aliens and it's very cool. It reminds me a lot of the books and I read a like all of the Star Trek books of the original series crew. Like, I love those. So uh, original series, uh, or so the animated series, and then the original series, because uh, you know what? I love Kirk. I love Spock. I love Bones. I love that crew to death. Original series, best. Um, after that is Discovery. I really, in the beginning, I was like, mm, I don't know about this stuff. And I definitely don't know about the changes you made to the Klingons, not to be like one of those old Trek did it right things, but I'm just like a big fan of Klingons. And I felt like the changes didn't add. I mean, they didn't subtract, but they didn't add. It was just change for the sake of change. And I'm not super into that, but I really like Discovery and I really like like Burnham and Space Dads and like, like uh, Zora and um, like, like all the new characters and just, Saru and his like El Presidente love affair and just all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, right? Admiral Silver Fox. It's just, it's so good. And especially now that we're in the future and we're getting like programmable matter and detached warp nacelles. And I, I love all that techno battle shit. I'm so into that. So Discovery, yeah, number six. Number seven, Deep Space Nine. I really, really like Deep Space Nine. It's a fun show. It's not a show that I watched when it was originally airing. I mean, in the DS9 v Voyager War, I was Team Voyager, like, at a young age. Uh, but I have watched DS9 um, probably two or three times all the way through. Um, not as much as some of the other shows. But I do enjoy DS9, and I do enjoy, uh, like, Cisco and the Dominion War stuff and, and like, like Nog and, and uh, Kira and um, Jadzia Dax and Ezra Dax and that whole relationship. And like, like, I really enjoy all of that stuff that DS9 brought. It was a different kind of show than a lot of the other Star Treks. So, you know, like, I really enjoyed DS9. Eight is Prodigy. Good show. I think it has a lot of room to get better, but um, it's interesting. It's filling the universe in in a place that I didn't think it needed filling, and I enjoy that. 
Uh, nine is Star Trek Picard. It's good and I enjoy it and I'm into it, but I often ask myself, why is this happening? Um, or what the fuck is going on? So like Picard is good, but I, we've only had one season and we've, and it's around a bunch of good stuff. So like, I think season two might rearrange this list for me of Picard, but we'll see what happens there. And lastly is Enterprise. And I don't actually have beef with Enterprise. I've seen Enterprise all the way through, I think five times, um, or maybe four times, but I think five times. Uh, but the difference is, is that Enterprise is just like it. <sighs> It was too timey-wimey. It was too big arching story that was kind of whatever. Like, I, like, I like the ship design and I love like them discovering like species that we already know about and them having to rediscover tech that we already know about and stuff. But like, I, I feel like, and I actually enjoy all of the actors and I, I super enjoyed all the actors and all the characters that were portrayed in it. Um, they're really rad people, but uh, like, I, just, I wanted more out of Enterprise, and I feel like I never got more. And honestly, I think the biggest thing to blame for that is the studio canceling it a season before they did the refit. I think that 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 the canceled fourth season of Enterprise, I think it's the fourth season, I think would have br like brought it home. I think it would have definitely changed the series and elevated it in a good way. I think that Enterprise sort of suffered from being at the tail end of a long run of Star Trek, and it was just like kind of like being hamstrung every step of the way. Uh, but so Enterprise number 10. So again, Voyager, TNG, Lower Decks, Animated Series, TOS, Discovery, DS9, Prodigy, Picard, and Enterprise. So tell me what your favorite Star Treks are. What did you think of my list? Do you want to fight me in the comments? I understand, that's fair. I just made a bunch of very bold claims and uh, I'm just some asshole on the internet. So. Who cares what I think, right? Uh, but yeah, so like, what are yours? What do you like? Do you think Short Trek should be inv included? I mean, I don't know, even know where I would put Short Trek. Maybe, probably below Enterprise, honestly, just because like, like it's good, but it, it's not enough stuff. You know, I'm not super into that like hyper short form thing, but like, you know, I mean, maybe I'll rewatch. I've only seen Short Trek all the way through like once. So I also have like the least knowledge on that one. So. Like that might be part of it, but yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't count in my mind. Uh, so yeah, what do you think about that? Have you watched Star Wars Visions? Are you like a big Oscars award show fan? Like I, that's not at all my jam, but like maybe like it should be and I'm just being a stupid. So that's fair. And uh, what do you do for fitness and exercise and staying healthy? Because we all should strive to stay healthy. That's how we fight back against the bourgeoisie is uh, staying healthy. <laughs> Since, you know, they're trying to get us to eat McDonald's and unhealthy and shit like that, because that's clearly the way the prices are arranged, right? A bloody basket of kale more expensive than two double cheeseburgers. But uh, yeah, either way, I have been John Norgrove. This has been Pint Night. Those were some opinions, some news, some information, and some rants from yours truly, John Norgrove. And uh, this pint is almost done. And was real fucking good. Good job, uh, good job, Barrel Brothers. Batch don't kill my vibe. West Coast IPA, seven and a half percent. Totally worth it. Totally recommend if you're an IPA guy, and I'm a huge IPA guy. So I will catch you guys next time. Stay frosty, folks. And uh, oh my God, yeah! Don't forget to like this video, comment below, share, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys next time.